We have another spicy round coming up for you folks, though, for this round eight now. Yes, well, I think we do. And here they are on your screen. Oliver Eskelin of Finland versus Pontus Westland of Sweden. Yes, Pontus on the left here and Oliver on the right of the screen as you're looking at it right this moment and two players a Pontus a Swedish national here probably looking to do well in his home turf Oliver from Finland as well another Scandinavian country looking to represent this area of Europe in the second to last uh, regional championships or regional level event uh, going on before the world championships in August and two very strong players as well, and who've been playing for quite a while. Oliver, I know he's been playing a lot in the seniors division uh, until he mm. got a little bit older and now is joining us in the Masters <laughs> League and wiping the floor with a lot of us a lot of the time. I think um, Oliver's one of those people, I think, um, maybe a little bit like, kind of like our European Joseph Fugate in a way, mm. in that mm. like he mm. often got to a lot of like finals and a lot right. of top cuts without actually winning much. Um, so, But he's still a very consistent player and does very well. Yeah, no, you know, a player that graduated into the Masters and then <laughs> showed us Masters what the kids could do. Um, definitely showing my age again, uh, one round after another uh, here uh, behind the desk. Uh, but, you know, doing so, so well at various international championships. Pontus has been playing, of course, a long time as well. Had so many uh, high-level finishes, never quite making it to the sort of top four finals, uh, at least not as consistently as I think uh, consistently as I think Pontus would like, but certainly always being up there as a player that you know is going to do very well coming into any event. Exactly, and also we've got a, a, a vocal member of the Swedish community too, who kind of, who I had a chat with him earlier. He kind of brings in um, like of the newer Swedish players, right. especially in this tournament today. Apparently, there are quite a lot of completely brand new players that um, he's not been familiar with at all in the uh, Swedish Pokemon community. So having this Swedish regional here in Malmo has obviously been quite a boon for the uh, the local community. And that's what it's all about, especially with local tournaments coming back, and we've been able to play in our local scenes. One, getting those all important championship points. There are so many players that we've spoken to today that are just a smidge under the 250 points that they need to qualify for the world championships this year in the European region, at least. And there are a lot of players that will be playing at this event, both going for those day two, going on that day two race, trying to secure their position in the top 16, but also, of course, getting over that all important 250 championship point barrier. Yes, and I'm sure Pontus is looking forward to kind of reaching that as well. I think um, Oliver has a little bit more uh, points than Pontus does. I don't know the exact numbers here, but um, I think Oliver is in kind of reach of potentially of a day two at the moment based on how many points he's got. So like a win here or a top cut could really kind of etch himself really into that top 16. And you definitely want to be at least middle of the pack going into the last couple of events of the year. You don't want to be sort of straggling at the end at the 15th, 16th, uh, even 17th, 18th kind of position where you know that you really do need a deep finish and that puts you know that little bit of mental pressure on you to do really, really well in these tournaments. So, uh, you know, a nice place to be. Exactly. And it's nice from of so many angles too, because you've got the championship points, you've got, you can go into the world championships with kind of one day to kind of go, hmm, well, this is nice. I am like <laughs> not actually playing today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, less Pokemon, but more chance of maybe getting that world invite. So now, on your screens here, we do have the accolades of these two players. And as you can see on Pontus' end, it goes back a little way there to 2018 Bremen Regional finalist, almost the champion there. EUIC day two. Frankfurt top 16 and another top eight in uh, Yongkoping as well in 2019. Yeah, very good results there for Pontus. And on Oliver's side, an EUIC finalist. I was searching my memory banks for uh, which tournament that it was that Oliver made it to the finals of. And uh, I remember that was such a tight, tight game uh, in the 2022 European International Championships and a couple of top four finishes at the regional level, not just in the European region, but also getting the uh, travel going and uh, heading towards Milwaukee to uh, take a few points from the US region. Yeah, that would have been a lot of points for top four and a bit of prize money too. So, uh, but Oliver is back on a pretty much home turf almost at the moment um, here in Malmo. So I'm sure he's getting to get a 
uh, looking forward to getting a bit more of a, um, a local win here to kind of solidify his place amongst the Scandinavian community. It certainly is. And uh, speaking of recent accolades, uh, there is the uh, Utrecht special event that was happened not long ago that Oliver managed to get top eight in. So, uh, you know, looking uh, back to sort of the more recent times, Oliver is certainly on form coming into the Malmo Regional Championships and uh, certainly uh, certainly the player to uh, play to look out for in in this matchup. Yes, although Utrecht's special event was the regulation set B format. Ooh. So yes, it, it, it probably does translate quite well into regulation set C as the, it's only a difference of four Pokemon, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> as we've seen a lot of teams though, it's they're on every team pretty much. <laughs> what a difference they make. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to be seeing how these trainers really approach the matchup, starting with a little bit of a preview of what these players are going to be bringing to the match. What has been uh, allowing them to propel themselves to six and one records apiece in this event. Uh, great place to be with the last uh, two rounds to go. Only one more win required to get into day two. Yes, exactly. One more win in, in. But even if one of these players lose, they still have one more round to mm. kind of get that last championship. Well, la that last win even. And so both these players could still make it in. But I'm sure one of them wants to definitely get it in right now, <laughs> just to kind of secure it in and feel a lot more confident going in for the final round. Certainly is. As uh, yeah, these players are just getting prepared and ready for the match. In the meantime, uh, let's have our own little sneak preview, David, as what we're uh, going to be seeing coming out from these two players. Uh, Pontus on the left, uh, getting the first Baxcalibur that I've seen today so far, and the only the second, actually, Palafin that I've seen coming out from this uh, from this event. And uh, I'm really excited to see a little bit of the things that I was expecting to see a few more of uh, coming in here. Yeah, that's actually quite refreshing to see, really, um, <laughs> especially with Palavin bringing all that water. It's kind of all, all just kind of cool us off a little bit. But uh, interestingly, though, um, on this Palafin that Pontus is running, um, alongside the kind of Amoongus, Arcanine, Fluttermane kind of core he's got, it's the Terra Grass on the Palafin, mm. which I think is a really nice call into this format at the moment because suddenly Amoongus cannot safely spore into that. It cannot safely redirect everything away because Palafin can go straight into that grass type and ignore everything it does. Right, and that's one of the things that uh, players really like to do against Palafin. Uh, just make sure that it can't target safely into anything else. And uh, players have to resort to using, or Palafin players, should I say, have to resort to using things like Wave Crash to be able to knock out that Amoongus before they can use that Jet Punch uh, in their hero form to really knock out uh, their opponent's Pokemon as quickly as possible before they can even move. That's exactly right. Um, so this allows it to just do that little bit more, and it is very relevant for this matchup because on Oliver's side, he also does have that Amoongus that could do just that. However, you did mention the Baxcalibur a little bit earlier, Ben, and interestingly, Oliver also has a Baxcalibur, and interestingly as well, they both have the same item, and interestingly enough, they also have the same moveset. So we're both having a mirror of clear amulet Baxcalibur with the glow Lave Rush, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, and Protect. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these players kind of face off against each other with these two mammoth dragon types of this generation. And how they've trained them coming in here. I mean, you know, Pokemon is a, a game, certainly in the video game format, where you have a lot of opportunity to be able to train your Pokemon differently, uh, whether that's a different uh, nature, uh, how speedy you train them to be, how many hits you train them to be able to take, how many, how much damage you train them to dish out. These are all big decisions and uh, they create a lot of differences, even if it's just like a couple of little stat points here and there. It can make all the difference in how uh, these battles unfold. And there's a really key matchup as well for a Baxcalibur where you can threaten the one hit knockout with a Glaive Rush on either end. So as soon as one is faster, that's suddenly a huge advantage to be bringing your Baxcalibur into that matchup and might put off the other person from not bringing theirs. So mm. a, a really kind of um, a, a big dynamic that will only get found out after game one. Right, and uh, you know, 
there's a couple of Backscalibur that have been running around that favor moves like Dragon Dance to be able to uh, boost up a little bit, take advantage of some positive pressure uh, with both getting a little bit more speed and, of mm. course, some more attack. And uh, Backscalibur, it could be argued, doesn't need much more attack. Uh, but hey, you know what? We we take those sometimes, and it's uh, it's nice to be able to have more than you need rather than not quite enough. Uh, absolutely, especially with all this bulky Pokemon going round well, that live to survive all these hits and throw out intimidates. And Batscalibur is a perfect Pokemon to, to to get around just that sort of stuff, especially when you throw a clear amulet onto it. Mm. One of the new items mm. this generation that just prevents any of your stats from being dropped. So intimidate being one of the main ones, and uh, maybe icy wind another. So and, and, and obviously ends up being a very popular pick for Batscalibur. It does. It's so effective. I mean, we see the effect of how much uh, damage reduction Intimidate has. And it, it's compounded by the fact of that Thermal Exchange coming out from Backscalibur, one of the new abilities, of course, the signature ability of Backscalibur, or the Backscalibur line, should I say, uh, which does mean that it cannot get burnt by Will-O-Wisp at the same time. So those two main forms of power control that you could use to stop a, stop a Backscalibur in its tracks both of which don't work, and in fact, Will-O-Wisp does activate Thermal Exchange, which does boost its attack further, so uh, kind of the opposite of what you want. Yeah, it is. So, like, for an Ice-type, it's got a great matchup into Fire-types, which is, yeah. like, what makes about Skybook really unique of a Pokémon, and makes it just so cool. So I really love its introduction to this generation and into this whole format, too. It really has found its place there. Now, looking at... The like move set it's got though, which we haven't even kind of talked about, is like what sort of moves that you pick for this thing. Mm, because mm. there's definitely not a standard four that everyone seems to go for, even though we've got the same move sets here. We've we've seen Ice Shard and Icicle Crash here. We've seen Icicle Spear on a few as well. Yeah. We've seen Swords Dance and Dragon Dance as you mentioned before. Uh, we've seen coverage moves like Earthquake. And I know yeah. uh, Jamie Boyd from last round. He's run back Scalper before with like Terra Electric Blast. Yes. Uh, like, yes. So yeah. There's so much you can do with it. Uh, absolutely. Very versatile. Post Pokemon. It's one of those Pokemon I think we see less in the usage charts, but when we see it, it tends to do very, very well. It's one of those Pokemon I think that has quite a high skill ceiling to be able to use. You know, the, the, the more that you practice with it, the more that you train with it, the more that you hone in on the various options that it has at its disposal for the team that you want to be using it in, the better you can perform and the more that it's going to be doing for you. And one of the, the main people I think who's kind of expertly used it is Gabriel Agachi Madela, who won <laughs> yeah. the freaking EUIC with the Backscalibur. Um, no, no, sorry. Nearly. 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 <laughs> I got, almost got overhyped there about just Backscalibur in general. No, Paul Chua very like convincingly won that um, with his excellent play, but that Backscalibur still really shone in that final game. It really did, and just a showcase of why you use Pokemon like that. It's it's just such a good Pokemon. It's a, we could we could go on for this for uh, quite a while, yes. David. I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, but it's you know to to round it off, it's the combination of. Uh, a good speed tier, a good move pool, a great ability, a good offensive typing, and of course, those stats to back it up. Exactly. Now, uh, on as we sh will shortly be getting into the game, um, hopefully soon, we can still talk about a little bit about uh, the the Palafin that um, is on Pontus' team at the moment, with the Moongus and the Arcanine, which we haven't seen a lot of. But it just goes to show, even a very common core, that everybody should really be preparing for these teams and these these regionals, etc., really seems to kind of be pulling out of the bag still. Like, it's still Amoongus with its Terra Water. It's still Arcline with the Intimidate and the Will-O-Wisp, um, but it's still proving itself to be really good, especially if you just kind of tweak something just slightly, like that Terra Grass on the Palafin, or Howl on this Arcanine. Howl is one of those moves that's really picked up in popularity. You can see it there on Pontus' team alongside will o -Wisp and Flare Blitz. One of the things that stands out to me actually on this Arcanine is the, the choice of Terra Grass rather than the more common Terra Water. And uh, definitely with the safety goggles, you, usually you have safety goggles and then Terra something not grass because the Terra Grass can be to avoid the Amoongus. But I like the way that Pontus has built that because it uses uh, Terra Grass for, you know, a matchup into a different type of Pokemon. And then the safety goggles is the thing that's actually helping with the Amoongus matchup. 
And here we have Oliver's team as well. The Fluttermane Amoongus, Chiyu Gyarados, Iron Hands, and Baxcalibur. So I think those first five, I think we see a lot of, but mm. then there's a Baxcalibur there suddenly. I mean, uh, if you change this team with uh, Arcanine over Chiyu and uh, the Palafin over Gyarados, it's a, a very, uh, very familiar team, I think, to what we've seen mm -hmm. in the European International Championships, but those few changes make a big difference. Yeah, and that Baxcalibur seems to just be in the slot of a Murkrow, which we've seen a lot of, so it's not a not an exactly comparable switch up, but it really does turn up the offensive pressure, that's for sure, with, if you've got a Baxcalibur there. So, it, going into the matchup, and then exactly how both of these trainers are going to go up against each other, I think Oliver's definitely going to have to be thinking about how to deal with a Palafin, where mm. I don't think everyone would prep for Terra Grass Palafin. So at the moment for Pontus, it does look like a really strong option, especially going into a Chiyu. Certainly does, and we'll have to see how that matches up. But on the screen at the moment, if you are watching live along with us, then do cast your votes and support in the chat for who you think is going to be winning or who you are supporting, of course, to go into this round. Pontus on the left. Oliver on the right. Yes, get your votes in before the poll closes, before the game starts. Whether it is your favourite or who do you think is going to win or just who you like the name of more, who knows? <laughs> um, both very strong options, to be honest, for all of those categories. Indeed. And uh, yeah, as we get, get, uh, get into this game, uh, you were talking a little bit about how these players were going to match up in the Pokemon uh, that they bring. And, uh, you know, it, I, I think it really does come down to how well this Palafin can position for Pontus's side of the field because uh, you know with that Terra Grass it is going to be able to sidetrack that Amoongus and it's going to do so much damage to Fluttermane, it's going to do lots of damage to Iron Hands, it's going to do lots of damage to GU, Baxcalibur probably can take a hit from it but it, it goes for its Terra Poison then it no longer resists those water moves it looks like a really productive member of Pontus's team. So I think Oliver's going to have to be thinking about how he can deal with that, especially thinking about that Terra Grass, which is different from what we usually see in that Terra Water. And here we go into round eight of the Malmo Regional Championships. It is Oliver Esclin versus Pontus Westland, and game one has started. Arcanine and Baxcalibur lead versus the Iron Hands and Shi Yu. A fake out in play coming out from Oliver's side of the field, and we'll be putting a little bit of pressure onto Pontus's side of the field, especially with the opportunity for uh, some damaging moves coming out from from that GU, but Pontus's Baxcalibur is not going to be taking any damage this turn. Instead, the Tinglu is going to be coming in to remove some of the damage from or reduce some of the damage from that GU. Howl coming out from this Arcanine on the switch in is going to be boosting up the power of that Tinglu, and it's looking pretty threatening Ooh. right now. But what else looks threatening? <laughs> it's that GU. Yeah, so after a um, battle of a little bit of positioning here, both sides have really boosted up their offensive presence. So this Chiyu is looking very threatening right now. Oh, I do wonder though, um, it, 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 Chiyu is a little bit slower than this Arcanine, which is a naturally actually faster Pokemon. So it looks like this Chiyu maybe is a little bit on the bulky side, which makes a lot of sense when you're trying to boost up that nasty plot. You may don't have to get train it as much in that offensive stat. You can it, instead just make sure it's doing got the bulk to be able to set it up, and then once you've got that nasty plot, whoa, you, you've got a lot of firepower behind you. You certainly have, and Pontus is going to have slightly less firepower this turn with the Gyarados switching in for that Iron Hands, both resisting any ground-type moves that be, could, could be coming out from that Tinglu, but also just trying to uh, stop that Howl from uh, allowing Pontus to run away with the game. It's a Terra Water coming out from Oliver's side of the field onto that Chi Yu. So two water type Pokemon uh, on Oliver's side right Ooh. now. will does does uh, uh, miss its mark onto the Gyarados. So no attack drops coming out from that, oh. but a burn from the heat wave coming out onto that Ting Lu. That's gonna be 
crucial as this payback does next to no damage, relatively speaking, to this Chi Yu. <laughs> That's a really unfortunate term for Pontus there. The Will-O-Wisp miss into the Gyarados and the 10% burn chance right onto the Tinglu from that Heat Wave too, which then further half the damage of the payback that came out that turn. So um, a little bit of a setback for Pontus in this game, but as you can see, he's still got four fairly healthy Pokemon, and Tinglu, especially with that Ruination, can still do a lot of damage regardless of any burn or stat changes. Uh, both Ruination and Fisher that that kind of fell out of favor with Ting Lu. Uh, players not liking that 30% accuracy uh, uh, whatsoever. Um, just allows it to be a threat in these sort of positions where it has been burnt, where it has been intimidated, and certainly something that Oliver is going to have to watch out for. And here comes the Iron Hands of the Gyarados, so saving that made that intimidate maybe for a little bit later for these two physical attackers out in the field right now. Arkham goes for the Protect, and it's a great call on Pontus' end, wasting Chi Yu's attempt there, but can he make the most of it with this Ting Lu as it follows up with a Ruination into the Chi which avoids <laughs> it as well. Pontus is really not having a great first game at the moment, as Chi Yu now just heals up a little bit with its leftovers. It does indeed, and a little bit of chip damage coming out from that burn onto the Ting Lu. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, sometimes Pokemon's moves can miss and it's not the best when it happens, but uh, so, sometimes you've got to get it out of the way early and uh, then you know, reset yourselves, go for the rest of the set. That doesn't mean that Pontus is out by any stretch of the imagination at the moment as the will o -Wisp, uh, comes out and does land into the Iron Hands, a great target for it to hit and fake out, stopping, of course, the Ting Lu from moving this turn. Yep, that's a Willow hit right there. As Dark Pulse <laughs> comes out from a plus two Chi Yu is definitely going to be one hit KOing this Arcanine at the moment. And there's the Ting Lu flinch too, as more kind of health gets ticked up for Chi Yu and health gets ticked down for Ting Lu. And we'll see what uh, Pontus is going to be bringing in. Certainly, uh, that Chi Yu is causing a lot of problems for Pontus right now. Uh, only a little bit of damage and the ability to uh, get itself boosted up as, uh, alongside uh, the Beads of Ruin ability that drops the special defense of all Pokemon around it. Uh, that's a lot of damage, David. <laughs> a huge amount of damage. <laughs> and um, when I'm trying to play Pokemon, I'm trying to do a lot of damage. So these guys are doing it pretty well. Um, Fluttermane comes in. The booster energy activates the special attack. So there's a lot of offensive pressure whilst this Fluttermane is on the field at the moment. Iron Hands, maybe preserving that fake out a little bit for later, switches out into the Amoongus right now. Tinglu also switches out. And it's a nice one too because then that actually is going to boost the power of the Fluttermane that is now right. on the field. Backscalibur is the choice for Pontus. He decided to bring his this time, but none on Oliver's end. But it is the Terra Fairy coming out, I believe, from this hugely powerful Fluttermane right now. Hugely powerful now that that Ting Lu has indeed left the field. It's likely going to be targeting down one of Oliver's Pokemon. If it is going into that Chi Yu, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Maybe next turn. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, Protect coming out from that Chi Yu. And of course, yeah. if it does go into the Amoonga slot, it will not be doing too much damage to a resisted Pokemon. But I really like the way that Pontus has positioned uh, this turn to be able to get that Backscalibur on the field to threaten Amoongus as it switched in. Uh, as well as being able to put a little bit of pressure with Dazzling Gleam from Pontus's Fluttermane onto both Chi Yu and the Amoongus. Uh, it, it's a nice place to start laying down some damage. Yeah, and what's quite interesting at the moment though, especially because Pontus is able to position his Pokemon a lot better, is because Oliver's Amoongus does not have Protect. Right. which makes it a lot more simple to just kind of target into it when it's on the field to just dish out that damage. Which And so instead of having the clear smog, which is not that useful right now, and it looks like it's really paying off, and a 100% um, accurate a like, move actually hits, even though Ice doesn't have a little bit less. But uh, it's a critical hit, and it's going down. <laughs> it's definitely going back to Oliver. Heatwave then uh, is going to be Whoa. enough to put a lot of damage onto Pontus' side of the field, but not enough to pick up any KOs. That Backscalibur and Fluttermane both outspeeding the GU is a tricky situation to be in for Oliver. I think you really did want to get that knockout coming out onto the Backscalibur, but unfortunately for him, wasn't able to do so, and Gyarados joins back onto the field, uh, but in front of two Pokemon that are very, very threatening right now. Yeah, that's looking like 
Impulsus has really turned things around for really thanks to the training of these Pokemon to be able to live those attacks has been absolutely huge now because Gyarados, this Gyarados seems to be kind of the more bulky, maybe safety goggles kind of um, Gyarados that we often see that doesn't usually have a lot of speed there. So I think Pontus really has the speed advantage right now and he has a lot of offensive presence behind it, especially with that Terra Fairy Fluttermane. Well, that Gyarados doesn't need to be trained to be that offensive to be able to pick up knockouts here with both of Pontus's Pokemon being in the red. Uh, and that GU, of course, does have Protect. And so, uh, you know, there is a real opportunity here for Oliver to take a knockout. Whether or not Pontus will allow that or not remains to be seen as a Moonblast does launch out from that Fluttermane. Is going to be going into the GU, ensuring the knockout. Maybe unclear whether the Dazzling Gleam would have done so, but Moonblast definitely was definitely. enough. <laughs> Yes, it was. And here comes the Glaive Rush, doing a lot of damage. It's a hugely powerful move. And whoa, <laughs> there is the one, one hit, hit KO. Out. Just easy Backscalibur, just doing its thing. That is a, as you were saying, Ben, earlier, like, it does not really need more attack, does it? <laughs> yeah, <they're> <laughs> confirmed, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the Iron Hands coming out. It does, unfortunately for Oliver, have the burn condition. Oliver knowing that's a little bit too much of an uphill battle to be able to get back into this match and so does forfeit. And it will be Pontus that takes the first game. Uh, even though Pontus did get a little bit unfortunate in the early game, uh, as we said, definitely wasn't out for the count and uh, Oliver, uh, Pontus showed why exactly that was. Exactly. And we saw how important speed control was there. Mm. He obviously has a lot of speed training in his Pokemon, like the Fluttermane, that, that Backscalibur. It didn't need any kind of support on their end. And whereas Oliver's team was more kind of bulky, pivoting around, trying to support things, he just kind of lost the support options a little bit too early on. And it's that Backscalibur, I think, was the real key piece that Pontus was using to be able to deal heavy damage to Amoongus, which otherwise doesn't get one shot by pretty much anything, really. It's, it's always uh, a little bit of a shock to me when you see these sort of scenarios where uh, you've got Amoongus and Gyarados, two of the most uh, well-crafted Pokemon for support in the format. Uh, Backscalibur just arrives on the field like, nope, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> I'm going to knock you out. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's the more offensive Pokemon that are left remaining, uh, especially looking at the uh, damage that the Chi Yu did to both Backscalibur and Fluttermane. Even with a nasty plot on the field, if you think if uh, Pontus does in this second game not allow that nasty plot to go up, that's three hits that the Chi Yu is going to need to knock out that back Scalibur. Yeah, exactly. And so it's not quite simple as to um, how this game two is going to go because there's so much that can be switched up here. Now, we could. You could argue that from Oliver's end, Iron Hands didn't really do a whole lot. It was faking out a few things. It can't even fake out a Fluttermane, which is doing most of the damage. It got mm. burnt quite early, and even after, that's after it dodged one at the start. So, But it is the main way for Oliver to kind of deal with this Backscalibur. Yeah. So it, it, the question is, does he kind of keep it still? He may have it in the back this time to kind of preserve it. So let's see how this game two goes. Pontus one game away from getting his win and in to day two. Day two would be the absolute goal at the moment as it is Chi Yu and Amoongus versus Backscalibur and Arcanine. And I'm looking at that Arcanine's ability to go for a howl right now uh, just to start boosting up that Backscalibur. Uh, that would be able to knock out the Chi Yu in one given that it's holding a uh, leftovers rather than a focus sash, which is the other set that we've seen running in this uh, regional championship thus far. Amoongus, of course, is massively threatened by uh, both the Backscalibur and the Arcanine, unless Oliver decides to commit his terror, which may be what we're seeing right now. I think that is. I am quite familiar with the terror at the moment <laughs> from the course of today <laughs> and the last uh, few months or so. So it is the Amoongus going to the water terror. So Oliver may be predicting the icicle crash to come out at the moment, so he can definitely better redirect or go for a spore this time. But it's the Backscalibur going on the defensive this time, going for the Protect, as Arcanine does still howl. And fortunately for Hal, it does go through the Protect as Arcanine boosts up its own attack 
Zach and Baxcalibur for this turn. But does Chiyu? Yes, makes the most of this turn. And it girls get up that nasty plot. So it's kind of like in game one, we both sides boosting up. But who is going to make the first move? And a lovely spore there, rounding off the turn for the Amoongus. Who is going to make the first move? Indeed, it's likely going to be that Baxcalibur. But the Amoongus is able to redirect it. Now, uh, unfortunately for Baxcalibur, if it does go before the Chiyu yet again and has to use that Glaive Rush to be able to knock out the Amoongus, it's going to take double damage from that Chiyu. And with the Nasty Plot, we know that the uh, if the Heat Wave is able to connect or the Dark Pulse, of course, the more accurate of the two options, this Baxcalibur could go down. We're going to find out right now as the Rage Powder does go into the Amoongus. It's another howl from this Arcanine, boosting up this Baxcalibur so much, I think it's going to knock out anything at this point. Glaive Rush, there it is, uh, going over on its head into the Amoongus, which goes <laughs> absolutely down. So let's see where this Chiyu targets. As we saw, um, Heat Wave do a decent amount of damage last time, and it's just straight up that Dark Pulse into the Baxcalibur after the Glaive Rush absolutely going down. So a one-for-one -one trade going into this game so far. One for one is definitely something I think is in Oliver's favor in this game. The Baxcalibur was such a threatening Pokemon for uh, for Oliver to be able to deal with in the last game. Uh, Pontus managed to preserve it in the early stages of game one, but in game two, now it's knocked out early. We'll have to see the effect of that going to the middle, ge middle game of game two. Fluttermane joining the field for Pontus and Fluttermane joining the field for Oliver. So on Arcanine's end, it's been going for those howls, and it's obviously got the attack stats for itself as well. So with Fluttermane's kind of a piece on the board here, interestingly seeing the interaction of the Protosynthesis there too, both build, boosting special attack, but Pontus seems to have slightly the faster one at the moment, or, or potentially a speed tie, but likely the faster one. Now, Arcanine now threatens a one-hit KO onto the opposing Fluttermane because of those attack boosts. And what Pontus could do potentially to kind of maybe keep his Arcanine a little bit safe, he could switch to his Ting Lu, for instance, mm. to lower the damage of these two big special attackers. Um, but on the other hand, this Arcanine is definitely faster than the Chi Yu. So as long as it lives a hit from the Fluttermane, it can right. KO it right back at the moment. It just depends on where each of these ghost types target and where these fire types target. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to actually see a little bit of a double up coming up if uh, it is Pontus that is has the faster uh, Fluttermane into the Chi Yu, but if he does, it's not going to do any damage whatsoever. Ooh. Shadow Ball correctly targeting into the Fluttermane on Oliver's side of the field. It's a one hit knockout, no terror to be able to save it due to that Amoongus having the terror before Flare Blitz going into that protect. What a turn for Pontus. That's a massive turn, yeah. I think Oliver was possibly just kind of banking on it, being a speed tie, and then he kind of outspeeds, but not this time. Pontus gets a massive KO there, and now Iron Hands comes in, saved for the Vaxcalibur, yes, potentially, but it's already down at this point. And Fluttermane cannot be hit by that fake out, so a fairy move is looking pretty strong into it, and still even boosted by the booster energy. So maybe the Assault Vest might not even save it, especially when you factor in Chiyu's Beads of Ruin, which has ruined Iron Hands' <laughs> own chance of living any such fairy move. Fairy moves are very, very effective into this Iron Hands right now, and it looks like the Terra Fairy coming out from the Flutter Main on Pontus's side, increasing the damage. Now, there is a call to make here for Oliver as to whether that fake out is going to be going into this Flutter Main, predicting that it will no longer have the fairy typing. It doesn't come out, though. This Moonblast will go into the Iron Hands and be enough to Big pick up KO. the KO. He's going to be going back to Oliver, and it will be Chi Yu versus the World of Flare Blitz doing just Ooh. over half very crucial amount of damage to be able to do it, to be doing but a dark pulse finishing off that arcanine in true style getting the one hit knockout proving how powerful a pokemon chi yu really is but this flutter main looks to be the more powerful at the moment it with the, it's naturally high speed it is just able to threaten down this chi yu um, very much so right now there is nothing oliver can do right now um, except for Braver, a nice round, uh, next round, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, so, as Tinglu hits the field, uh, Fluttermane is going to get this KO most likely. And Oliver knows exactly the position that he's in. It will be a forfeit from Oliver's side of the field. Pontus taking the set 
two and O oh in round eight of the Malmo Regional Championships and guaranteeing a spot in day two of Swiss. Yeah, big congrats to Pontus there. This is a really big win for him, I think, as well, because uh, you know, with, with he did all right at Liverpool, I think, when I, when I saw him there. But um, I don't think he's been to too many other events. But he is back with a vengeance in his home turf here in Sweden. We'll have to find out a little bit later when we get Pontus onto an interview how close he is to that day one, day two race and what his plans are for Yokohama, Japan. In the meantime, let's have a little bit more of a conversation about that match because Pontus was... Uh, really in the driving seat a lot of the time and I think it was down to the training of that Pokemon we spent a little while talking about earlier that back Scalibur. It, exactly it was and not a lot of people are kind of prepping for it as you say it kind of it, as soon as it comes out it just kind of destroys and just does so much damage because it, when you look at the face of the metro at the moment there's not a lot of uh, offensive dragon typing at the moment that kind of comes out nor the ice unless you're kind of considering um Chien Pao. so yeah. but having the combination of being immune to the intimidate thanks to the clear amulet being immune to the fire moves it is a very different pokemon to Chien Pao. and having that glaive rush ability means right in the right position you just pick up one hit knockouts like a like a bulky Gyarados yeah there. That Gyarados was uh, unbelievable. Uh, whether that was down to a couple of damage rolls or whether that was an absolutely clean knockout, we won't ever know, unfortunately. Uh, but what we do know is that it was knocked out in one in that particular game. And really, really impressive uh, training in that back scale of a really impressive use of the glaive rush as well a really impressive training in the way that it could take attacks being able to take a heat wave from a two plus special attack boosted chi yu as well even including its uh, its ability it just kind of did everything really didn't it yeah and if anything it was kind of the ultimate support for Fluttermane. And mm. it kind of it maybe mm. is in this format too, because like Fluttermane is just so naturally fast and does so much damage. You really want something that, that can kind of sponge those hits a bit better. And Amoongus right. is great for that, especially for the on the fairy side, because they all like to go into Terra Fairy and boost that damage. But as soon as you kind of check that slot with something that threatens a one-hit kill on Amoongus, which there are not a lot of, because most Amoongus survive a flare bits from Arcanine, you bring in back Scalibur suddenly, which can't even <laughs> have his attack lowered, then suddenly Amoongus is no longer your answer for Fluttermane. I think that's mm. where Oliver's team mm. kind of really Really fell apart a little bit there because that Batscala just kind of changed everything. It did, and you know, it forced a terrestrialization from the Amoongus in the early stages of game two, and I think that was really important because that stopped the Terra later. Mm, exactly. And uh, Oliver wasn't able to uh, use Terra to better effect, instead, just using it on Amoongus that fainted the next turn. And so, uh, you know, you've really got to make the most of all of the options that you have with the Terra mechanics. And you've really got to be able to use it at the best time for you. And unfortunately, because of that back Scalibur putting so much pressure as well as that Flutter main, Oliver had to commit to a Terra at a point that wasn't beneficial for his game plan. Exactly. And if there was the icicle crash that came out there, then we may have looked at a slightly different game. Mm. But yeah, it was a bit of a call as to whether what was going to happen in that turn. But yeah, the Batscaloper protected and then was able to kind of adjust accordingly from there and get, went for a, a much safer Glaive Rush and to be able to get that nice trade kind of going off there, which freed up the Fluttermane so expertly well. I really liked as well the uh, the use of Howl uh, coming into mm. this match as well. It's a, it's, it's a move that I'm still a little bit unsure of, uh, you know, clearly showing why it's such a, a good option for these trainers to have. But uh, looking back at the early stages of game one, where that Ting Lu came in to drop the special, uh, special attack of the Pokemon that were threatening on Oliver's side of the field while getting an attack boost at the same time on both the Arcanine and the Ting Lu and putting on pressure forcing Oliver to make a bunch of switches. Uh, Pontus was really able to uh, get himself into a good position, even with not being as fortunate in the early stages of that game as well. Yep, just goes to show Pontus is back and so is Sweden. So we have got him ready for an interview where we'll find out a little bit more about the thoughts behind the man. Thank you so much, David. Hello, Pokemon trainers. I'm here with your winner of Swiss Round 8. It's Pontus Westerland. Congratulations, Pontus. How are you feeling? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really great. 
uh, it was face uh, I was facing Oliver uh, which he usually comes to our locals in Stockholm mm. um, so it was great getting to battle him like on the, on the bigger stage as well and I'm just really like through through the moon right now super super happy <laughs> yeah it was absolutely fascinating game as well in game one it started off and you weren't having the best luck with your Pokemon how did you you then of course went on to win that game so how did you stay keep your head in the game stay focused ready to play honestly um i'm kind of used to that kind of luck right now like <laughs> my entire season has been filled with that kind of stuff uh so i usually like, i just laugh it off uh but i was getting worried that like, i i missed so much damage uh, I was worried like I would not, uh, I would f f fall like too far behind in the game to come back. Uh, but I surprised myself a little bit by, by coming back in, in, the, uh, in the end game there. Yeah, and you really did do that. And I think, yeah, it's a testament to your mental resilience, especially at this late stage in the day. Such an exhausting uh, few rounds of Swiss. And then in game two, you were picking up such quick knockouts onto Oliver's Pokemon. Um, does your team always pick up such quick knockouts? No, so the funny thing is, like, I'm using Palance, right? Mm. Uh, and everyone's like, oh my god, like, I can't use Palance. Like, <laughs> it, it's, taking, it's taking forever. Like, it's so mentally draining playing, like, nine rounds of Palance, like, playing the mirrors. But, like, the way I play Palance, it's, like, more offensive. Um, and, like, with Howl Arcanine and, and Bexcalibur. In game, in game one, I realized that my Bexcalibur was faster than Oliver's Shiyu. And that changed my entire game plan mm. uh, because I no longer had to fear. Uh, the fake out uh, from the Iron Hands and the Nasty Plot setups on Shiyu because I could use Double Protect and then like Howl and then Glaive Rush uh, Oko the, the Shiyu. Uh, so that was my game plan. Um, I was really close in game two of just clicking like Howl and Glaive Rushing the Shiyu straight away because I figured like he's probably going to terra, terra Water the Mungus, click Spore and Nasty Plot because that's what I would do. <laughs> um, but I got scared. Uh, but somehow like I just got bailed out. The, like the fact that my um, Calibre was faster than his Shiyu was monumental. Right, sure. Okay, so once you knew that information, you're able to play uh, accordingly. And it was such a cool Pokemon to pull out there, the Batscalibur. How useful has that been for you on your team? Dude, that's, the Excalibur has been and been like the MVP by far uh, mm. so far this weekend. Uh, it was my friend uh, Mike that gave me the idea. Um, that's why he has. Uh, I named the backs after him, Mike. Uh, so if you're if you're watching or listening, thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, it's been um, yeah, it's, it's been MVP. Like it's undisputed. It's so so good, so good. First time using it myself this year, uh, and I just don't understand why I didn't use it earlier. Mm, that's really interesting to hear. And there was that point in game one where it got that thermal exchange boost thanks to uh, I think it was a heat wave coming out from the Chiyu. Were you sort of, does part of you, when Batscalibur is up against the Chiyu or an Arcanine, for example, does part of you leave it in just in case it does get that thermal exchange boost? Uh, not, usually, usually, uh, usually not. Uh, this case, I, I knew like if I want to have any shot at winning this, I need both of my monsters to survive, and they did on like 12 and like 9 HP. <laughs> uh, so good spreads there. Um, but I haven't got off the thermal exchange much at all, like throughout the entire tournament. I think this is like the second second time, but it won me that game, so I'm very pleased with that. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And of course, you are a Swedish player, and you're playing here at the Malmo Regionals. How does it feel to be doing so well on home turf? So this is my fourth um, Swedish regional. I think, no, sixth Swedish regional, fourth in Malmö. Uh, this is the first one that I actually done well with. Uh, I think I got like top four back in 2016, but that was a 18 man regional. Uh, and then I got top eight in 2019, but that was a 26 man regional. Uh, so like doing well at, at home turf for like an actual uh, big size regional feels fantastic. Yeah, absolutely amazing. It's so interesting to get that little insight there into uh, the size that regionals used to be uh, and what they are now. I mean, it really is on the up and up. Such an exciting scene and game to be a part of. And uh, looking to uh, more generally, Pontus, at your season as a whole, uh, how are you doing? How's it going with the World's Race, Championship points and all that? So uh, my season has been horrendous so far, honestly. I haven't gone to many events. I know I said to myself, like, I want to give myself a shot because I usually go to like two or three wins uh, per year. I said this time, like, I want to do the whole season. It didn't end up like that. Mm -hmm. I missed it. I missed registration for EUYC. Like, I never got in. Um, and that, uh, like, threw off my entire season. Uh, so this is my third event. Um, I have 50, 55 CP at the moment. I will have more after this, but I need to win in order to get my invite because I'm not going to Turin. 
Um, so it's pretty much like win or bust. But also, like, I'm not going to Japan unless I get the paid day two trip, which mm -hmm. I'm never going to get anyway. So I'm just enjoying my time here right now. Well, yeah, exactly. And it's yet another example, we've seen a lot of this today, of a player who is taking the pressure off themselves and actually is playing really well as a result. And there's a lot to be said for that, I feel like. Is that something that you chime with as well? You know, you're more relaxed going in and you're seeing the results. Yeah, I think so. Also, like, I, I've been second in the regional before. Um, I think like that was a couple of years ago though, so I washed up kind of. But at the same time, I feel like I'm playing like playing wise, I'm playing better than I ever have. But I'm more scared of like making reads because I put too much pressure on myself, right? Mm. Uh, and I feel like this weekend, like round one, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself. But after that, it's been going like really well. I've been flowing. Uh, I'm not being scared of making predictions because uh, like. Like, no matter how good you are at this game, it still comes down to, like, if he protects or not, or, like, you, you, you need to make that call. And making that call, like, in a winning in situation, for example, is really, really hard. Um, yeah, so, yeah. For sure. Take a leaf out of Ponce's book, Pokemon Trainers. Just uh, take a little bit of pressure off yourself if you can, and you may well see the results. So, before we wrap up, Pontus, quick question for you. What's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, you're going to check up pop on the spot like this but i think i think like so um, it's like a running joke in our community like my favorite pokemon changes like every single day pretty uh, much but giraffarig has has always been there hmm. so uh and i'm happy to get an evolution but i would say like um for uh giraffarig right now yeah maybe good team build with evia like giraffarig who yes. knows <laughs> maybe someday someday Come up with a team like that and finally any shout outs you want to give punters uh, so shout out to uh, my mom and dad uh, for supporting me, shout out to my girlfriend or my fiance actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my bad, uh, but she uh, she's here. She's super supportive. She doesn't love Pokemon, but she's the best anyway. Uh, being here, shout out to all the uh, Swedish community. It's great to seeing so many Swedes out here. Uh, everyone that's been cheering for me from home. Um, shout out to uh, Mike for the team, uh, and, and I I love you all. Take care. Well, there you go, Pokemon trainers. How touching. Congratulations, Pontus, on winning that Swiss Round 8. And congratulations to you and your fiancé as well, of course. Thank you so much for sticking with us, Pokemon trainers. We're nearly going into the final round of day one here at the Malmo Regional Championships. It's going to be an absolutely cracking match, so don't go anywhere.